All right. Chapter 9. Having a healthy body image. All right. This is a really interesting chapter because a lot of things are portrayed in the media as body image. All right. Stop doing your worksheet and take your notes. You're going to need them. Okay. All right. Lesson 9.1, 9 sorry, factors that influence body image, right? What influences affect a person's body image? What influences, influences, external, affect a person's body image? Come on, young ladies. I know y'all know. Men, sometimes. What Influences affect a person's body image. Social media. Perfect. Perfect. Social media is the mainstay of today. Okay? All right? After studying this lesson, you will be able to define body image. Explain how a person's social environment influences body image. Okay? Analyze how media and society affect female and male body images. Discuss the impact of race and ethnicity sorry, on body image and assess how some athletic activities influence a person's body image. Okay. What physical traits do female models have in common? What physical traits do female models have in common? It's very obvious. What? They're skinny, right? They're skinny. What physical traits do male models have in common? They're usually what? What? Buffed or muscular, right? Right? What do, what, do you, what do your findings tell you about physical ideals presented in the media? How does this influence the way you see yourself? Okay? Anybody in here? Does the media influence how you see yourself? Not just physically, not just exercising and that type of thing, but young ladies using mask eyeliner or mascara or anything like that no shade <laughs> but do, do those things influence how you live everyday life apparently it doesn't influence rocio rocio i've never seen rocio wear makeup ever so those things don't influence her however my good sister here i see her wear it all the time there's nothing wrong with it i'm just saying Maybelline may put something on TV and make you want to buy it, right? Okay, so social media, or they may send, you may Google lipsticks, and all of a sudden, when you go on your Instagram page, you got lipstick ads coming across there, right? So all that influences it, right? It's all influential, all right? Your body image, your thoughts and feelings about how you look, that is the definition. Your thoughts and feelings about how you look not what your body actually looks like, but how you think it looks. Some women can be a size six and they think they're fat. Okay? Some women can be a size six. Some women that are a size 14 says, I wish I was a size six. So it's all in how you mentally or you internally think you look. Okay. can have a large impact on your health, mental health and physical health, because your mental health can affect, right, your physical health, right? Okay. You worry all the time. You're anxious all the time. What do they think? What do they think of me? What if I'm, what if I'm not cute enough? What if I'm not pretty enough? What if I'm not handsome enough? What if I'm not? All that plays a part. Okay. And don't say it doesn't play a part in your life these days, it does. You're at a very impressionable age in your life. So what somebody thinks of you, physically and mentally, is, is important to you. You may not physically say it out loud, but you think that. At some point, you have thought that. Not saying you have it on your mind all the time, but you do think of it, okay? So you have to keep those thoughts intact. Okay. 
Social environment and body image. Family can emphasize certain physical qualities. Okay? You ever heard, went up to your grandmother's or your aunt's and they say, Woo, child, you look like you're gaining some weight. Probably want to drop some, right? Yeah, I know. I, I, you know, I don't look like I did when I played college football. So people, when they see me and they haven't saw me in some years, they don't say, hey, say, whoo, boy, you ain't playing football no more, are you? Okay, so that's kind of the way it goes. Friends, pressure to have a certain appearance to fit in with a peer group. Okay, that is very true. Pressure to fit in with certain people. There was a young man that was in here yesterday and he said his people used to tell him he needed to gain weight, but he didn't want to gain weight. So he would eat at the dinner table and then he would go throw up. So they would think he was eating enough to gain weight, but he wouldn't do it. Okay. Pressure to appear attractive to potential dating partners. Okay. Here's the deal. Everybody wants to be accepted by somebody. I don't care how you say, unless you get 50 like me. When you get old like me, you don't care about being accepted by anybody. It's just like, whatever. Okay? Social media can make pressure from peers worse. Okay? Increase pressure to look perfect. Okay? So friends, family, and social media are the social environments. Okay? You know the rest. You don't have to write down every bullet. You just know that family, friends, and social media. So people around you, those are the people that are around you all the time. Either your friends or your family. Or your, you've got your face in that phone on social media. Right? Images in the media provide an accurate representation of what people's bodies should look like. That's a myth or a fact. Okay? Models used in advertising and media often represent uh, idealized versions of male and female bodies, which do not represent most of the people's bodies. Okay? Doesn't do it. All right. Female bodies in the media, often portrayed as thin and young. Thin and young. Okay? Not fat and old. Okay? Weight stigma. Flawed idea that having a thinner body and lower weight is always better. Okay? That is what you call weight stigma. You need to know that. That is a definition. Serious risk factors for negative body image and eating disorders. Okay? Editing and airbrushing of images to eliminate blemishes, cellulite, bulges, and wrinkles. That would be equivalent to what? A. Stop using them filters. Right, right, right. <laughs> stop using those filters. Because when you show up and that ain't you, yeah. eh, yeah, you're like, uh, eh. Okay, so stop using those filters. Okay, just know what weight stigma is. You don't have to know all of that. You, you, you can figure that out on the quiz, on a test. Okay, flawed idea that having a thinner body or lower weight is always better. All right, did you know female bodies in the media? The average woman in the U.S. wears a size 12 to 14. But the average model featured in magazines was a size 0 to 4. Why? They think that clothes fit better on thinner people. They think it looks better on the screen. They can advertise. Just telling you. Okay?
Male bodies in the media. All right, now we're flipping the table here. Often portrayed as tall and muscular, may cause development of muscle, muscle dysmorphia. Okay? A order, a disorder, sorry, characterized by extreme concern with becoming more muscular. I see it all the time. I go to 24 hour fitness. There are people in that gym every time I walk in. And I'm talking about the same people. They exercise and lift weights every day. Every single day. I have no clue. I can go in there at 9 o'clock in the morning. And the next day or two days later, two weeks later, I can go in there at 5 o'clock in the evening and I can see them same people. They'll be lifting weights. Taking pictures. Lifting weights. They in the gym. Every time. I, I don't see anything wrong, but I mean, at some point, yeah. I mean, what's the odds that I go in a gym at 9 a.m. and then I go back to a gym two weeks later at 3 or 4 and I see the same people? Not everybody's the same, but the faces I remember every time. I mean, don't get me wrong. When I was young, I used to be kind of a, a you know, lifted weights, and, but I wasn't there all the time. You know, some days, oh, I ain't going, you know. Uh, you know, it's over work, but some people are obsessed with it. There's some people I see on my Instagram. Girl, they work out every day. They fitness, they trying to be fitness models or whatever. Every time I flip on Instagram, they're on there. I'm like, you, it's got to be more to life than that. You know, <laughs> Rocio, come on, right? It's got to be more than that. Right, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Bottom line is, guys. Don't let anybody tell you you're not good enough. Don't let anybody tell. And there are plenty of people that will tell you in, uh, in microaggressive type ways. Or some people will tell you that just straight up. Don't let anybody tell you you're not good enough. There's a top for every pot. You got that? There's a top for every pot. And just because that girl is 0 to 4 and she's not 12 to 14, is the 0 to 4 going to treat you right? Is she going to love you like you want to be loved? Is he going to love you like you want to be loved? This guy right here, I ain't sure. <laughs> All right. Male body image. 25% of males with a normal weight... Uh, perceive themselves to be underweight. 90% of teen boys exercise with the goal of bulking up. Okay? This guy here, he's pretty thin. He'll look in the mirror, he'll look on TV and say, man, I need to, I need some more muscles. Depends on how fast he wants them. Muscles don't come overnight. You don't start lifting last week and all of a sudden you are in Mr. Olympia today, to this week. Doesn't work. Takes years. But sometimes you don't want to wait that long. So then you start taking steroids, steroids right? Start taking steroids. But if you, truth be told, if you just do the protein and do it like you're supposed to and you lift like you're supposed to, you, you usually come up pretty quick. I mean, it's not going to be in the next couple of weeks. Probably not going to be in the next few months. But in a year or so, you start to see a lot of difference. Okay? But you have to have an additive to that. Okay? Especially if you don't eat right like you young people don't. Hot fries and Cheetos is not exactly the meal of champions, right? I know the Bells, they like to eat candy. All right. Race and ethnicity. Most Caucasian or light-skinned models shown in U.S. media. Okay. So here's what happens. You don't have to write all that down. Just write down the part you want to write down. It's not really that. Okay. Race and ethnicity. Brown and black people most of the time are more muscular than our other white counterparts. Okay. It's just the way it goes. Okay. Um, so when you look at those height and weight comparisons, so you're 5'8", you should be 145 pounds. I've never been 145 pounds and stayed there in all my life. 
I graduated high school at 170. Okay, so, but I was physically fit. In college football, I was 180, 185, but I had probably less than 2% body fat. Okay? So, huh? No. You can't have Yeah, you can. Oh, you die. Yeah, you can. No, you can't. Yes, you can. So, I mean, it's, don't let people tell you that this is what you're supposed to be when Obviously, race and ethnicity play a, a big part. Now, genetics plays a lot of it. Okay? Genetics plays a lot. If your grandparents or your mama or daddy is heavy, you got to take that into consideration. That there's a possibility that if you eat a lot, it'll, it'll, it'll be that way. Or if your parents are really skinny, you may be skinny. You may not be skinny. Okay? All right, different groups have different values, preferences in relation to ideal body type and appearances. Okay? Watch what you eat. There was a lady in my old neighborhood. She was a Hispanic lady. She made these tamales. They were the best tamales, I swear, on this face of the earth. I'm telling you, they were great. And I used to, and I was a teenager, I used to eat them. Oh my gosh, she, oh, we got some talk. Give me some. Every time I see, give me some. I buy 10 of them. In two days, I'd have them eat up. They were good. I mean, but I was a teenager, you know. Yeah. Yeah, they, were, they were good. But what they were cooked with, not so good. There was a lot of grease. There was a lot of lard. I mean, she was an old, I mean, you talk about 20, 30 years ago. This is an old fashioned cook, Hispanic cook, she cooked with a lot of grease. So you got to be watching. All right. Thinking critically, athletic activities and body image. If you participate in an athletic activity that emphasizes a particular body types and features, what are some steps you can take to maintain a positive body image? All right. So a lot of this goes for like women. All right. A lot of girls and women, they don't like to lift weights. Because they say, I don't want to look like a boy. You're not. You can lift weights. Let me tell you something. You can lift weights right now, and unless you're a girl, and you're taking protein, and you're lifting weights, and you're eating them every day, and it would take some years, you're not going to look like a boy. You just, your, your estrogen level is not a testosterone level. It's not going to happen. Now, will you, will you tone up? Will you lose some weight? Yeah. But other than that, no, you're not going to look like a boy. Okay? So it's not going to happen. All right, lesson review. Here we go. Answer, answer, answer. Answer, answer. First question is on you, lovely. That's you? Yes, you. First one is you. Read. What is the flawed... Belief that having a thinner body or lower weight is always better. What's the answer? Somebody help her out. What? Weight stigma. How is it that he's in the same lecture and he knows and you don't? Mm -hmm. Which disorder is characterized by extreme concern with becoming more muscular? Right? Muscle dysmorphia. All right, here's the hard one. What can help protect people against the negative impact of ideals that are not diverse? What can help protect people against the negative impact of ideals that are not diverse? Diverse. Let you off the hook. Having a strong racial and ethnic identity. Okay. All right. So this is the end of lesson 9.1. We will move to lesson 9.2 really quickly.